Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today I thought I would talk about the gear that I've been using for the past year. I've been fortunate enough to travel to some pretty special places in the past year and a bit, including Scotland, Iceland, the European Alps and the Canary Islands, which have all helped shape my current gear list. Keep in mind the gear that I'm going to talk about is what works for me and it might be different to what works for you. As you'll see, I do lug around a fair bit of camera gear, which means my pack does come out to be quite heavy in the end. You can find my full gear list on my website in the links below and some other bits of information about my recent hikes as well. Otherwise, if you plan to stay and watch the video, get comfortable and I hope you enjoy my 2022 hiking gear video. My big Agnes Copper Spur ULV-1 one-man tent has been my go-to since I hiked the GR131 in the Canary Islands. I previously used a Hilleberg Acto tent but decided to swap that for the Big Agnes which is less durable but much lighter and takes up much less space. Inside there's only enough room for your sleeping pad but there's plenty of porch space to store your pack, shoes and whatever other gear you need to keep dry. There's also lots of pockets on the inside which I find great for storing my phone, rechargeable battery and warm clothes in case I need them during the night. It's quick and easy to set up and pack down and has a very small footprint making it great for wild camping. My 55 litre Atom Pack Mo Rucksack has been with me since the start. It's a very minimalist design with one large main pocket two side pockets and an elastic front pocket. There is also a waist strap zip pocket which I love because I get to store my lip balm, airpods and snacks in and an elastic shoulder strap pocket which usually holds my phone. The pack is made by Adam Packs who are based in the Lake District here in the UK and the pack carries very comfortably up to about 15 kilos. My Thermarest Neo Air Ultralight sleeping pad has been a blessing for my sleep whilst on the trail. It holds warmth very efficiently and is probably one of the more comfortable pads I've ever used. I opted for the long version as I'm 6 foot 1. It also packs away really well without taking up too much space and I've had mine for about 2 years now and it hasn't let me down yet. I have a Cumulus 250 quilt which is made and designed in Poland. It weighs in at about 490 grams and has a comfort rating of 4 degrees Celsius and a limit temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. For what you pay, I think this quilt is actually amazing. It's lightweight and very functional and has two clips at the back which wrap around the sleeping pad to hold in heat. There's a few customizable options. I opted for a zipped footbox and some extra length as well. Take note, I get quite hot when I sleep so I prefer to have a lighter quilt and the option to put on some extra clothes in case it does get too chilly. I will also sometimes opt to use my Rab silk liner which adds a few extra degrees of warmth. I use a Cedar Summit inflatable Aeros pillow which is comfortable enough and does its job without any issues. I use Brooks Cascadia 16 trail runners as my footwear of choice. These trail runners are a dream. They're lightweight, super comfortable and they have great grip. I've never had any foot related injuries whilst using these shoes and they do wonders for my pace. They're obviously less durable than a solid pair of hiking boots and they're not waterproof. I have used them in Scotland where I've walked through bog and constant rain and they've become soaked but they do dry off very quickly. I pair my trail runners with darn tough hiking socks which are made of merino wool. These socks are super comfortable, dry quick and are super resilient and they don't get smelly. I can't recommend these enough. I use a Jetboil Micromo to boil water for my freeze-dried meals and coffee. Anyone who owns one of these knows how great they are. Small and lightweight and incredibly efficient at boiling water within minutes. You can also store small gas canisters or sachets of coffee within the actual compartment whilst hiking and it also has a shallow cup attached to the bottom. I use the Cedar Summit Spork for preparing coffee and eating my freeze-dried meals with. I use a Be Free 1 litre water filter. It has a soft body so its size is dependent on how much water you've collected meaning you can squish it right down and still it in your pack when empty. I usually just use the water filter as my main water bottle and towards the end of the day before I set up camp I'll fill up another container. So I use a reusable coffee filter to make filter coffee when I feel like carrying the extra weight will be worth it. I normally just store the coffee grinds inside my jet boil. So normally on my hikes I'll bring along a few freeze dried meals. I love the fire pot brand who I believe are based here in the UK. The beef and barley stew slaps so make sure you give that one a try if you plan to try them out. In terms of base layer clothing it generally varies. Sometimes I'll opt for the Craig Adams long sleeve hooded tee or sometimes I'll just opt for a regular running t-shirt. I'll almost always just wear running shorts, lately it's been my Nike ones. I have a Patagonia down puffer which I absolutely love. It's lightweight, low in volume and keeps me nice and warm. I usually put it on once I've set up camp for the evening or in the morning when I'm prepping breakfast and coffee. I have a Kathmandu windbreaker jacket which is an Aussie brand. It's a little bit heavy and I think 
think I'll probably look to make an upgrade in the near future. Thermals wise, I use a Patagonia Capilene Air hoodie, which I highly rate. I've also got the paired bottoms. Sometimes I'll use the hoodie as a mid layer if it's too cold for just the t-shirt, but not cold enough for the puffer. I'll also wear them while sleeping if it's a cold night. I use my Nike Tailwind trail running cap quite often. It's got an anti-reflective bottom of the brim, which I find to be quite helpful for blocking out the sun. And it's just nice and light and versatile. I usually bring a small first aid bag with me as well, usually for blisters and other small cuts and wounds. I use a trowel made by the Deuce Company. It does its job. I have a Garmin InReach Mini as an SOS beacon. Thankfully, I've never had to use that function, but I do use the weather and SMS functions quite often when I'm in an area with no reception and I'd like to contact loved ones. I use a black diamond sprint head torch. It's affordable, rechargeable and reliable and it does its job quite well. I've been very happy with it so far, no complaints. I use an anchor power bank to recharge my electronics. This one has been very reliable and it still holds quite a bit of charge after two years of using it. So I use a DJI Air 2S drone. This drone is relatively lightweight and low on volume. The batteries last generally for around 20 to 30 minutes and I've been very happy with the picture and video quality I've been getting out of this drone. Been on a few trips with me now from Scotland to the Tour de Mont Blanc all the way to the Canary Islands. Camera wise I use a Sony A7 Mark II. I have a Sony FE 16 to 35 millimeter lens and then I use a carbon fiber tripod and finally I use a Rode NTG mic to get my sound. I'll also use this windshield when I'm outside to help protect against the wind. So that's pretty much everything guys. Uh, if you've stayed around this long, thanks so much for watching. Um, I'll include some links below that will take you to my full gear list on my website. Uh, there are some affiliate links as well. So that means if you do make a purchase, I will get a small kickback, which will go straight towards making my next hiking film. Hoping to get to Australia in the coming months and I'm planning to do a big hike there. So hopefully I'll have a new video for you soon. But until then, uh, I hope you all keep well and I will see you soon. Bye.